So our guy Virgil Abloh decided to um, showcase some of his wares at Louis Vuitton during Paris Fashion Week. Um, as I mentioned previously, I wasn't necessarily a fan of Off White's um, full winter um, collection. I've always thought, in my opinion, again, in my opinion, don't kill me. I'm no one. I'm not a critic. I'm not Kathy Horn. I'm no one. But I always thought that of Off White. Off-White wasn't necessarily the best representation of Virgil's creativity and design skills. Um, I always thought sometimes um, the fact that he had such a blank canvas with his brand, it kind of led him to call any kind of a bit scattergun in the terms of how he approached design or, or, or in the terms of how you put stuff together, let me say. Um, it kind of always looked a bit disjointed, his collections. But if I had to choose a favourite, I'd say his men's was better than his women's, right? Some people wouldn't agree, but I would agree because I think the women's um, fashion... Um, industry or just the scene in general the bar is way way high right in terms of that kind of look if you want it there's so many brands you can go for but i think in terms of the menswear space they just occupied interesting position right where even though some of the stuff doesn't look that great i can understand why it does well because there's not much of that kind of thing in the market for the most part which is why he's been successful for the most part right um but i wasn't necessarily always a fan of it i always kind of thought it was a bit haphazard it looked that great I kind of had big, uh, I kind of had big hopes for it because I always thought maybe Virgil would approach Off White like undercover and use it as a way to kind of really experiment with things and go crazy and um, create these different worlds and he, which he kind of has done maybe with the set designs but hasn't really hasn't really captivated me as much as maybe a Junta Kashi show has with Undercover. But again, he's maybe has more experience under his belt. He maybe somebody's come from more of a traditional background. Blah 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 blah. There's it, there's reasons for it, but. I kind of felt a little bit underwhelmed with Virgil's shows for the most part, right? I never really liked them. Um, but, and then this Off-White collection, again, wasn't one of my favourites either. It seemed a bit haphazard, but I liked some of the proportion. I liked some of the shapes. I liked some of the baggier pants. I liked some of the trainers. I liked some of the sweats. The knitwear he does is always really strong. Um, surprisingly so, considering the things that he makes, you'd think, you know, he'd be maybe stronger in other things like hoodies and all that stuff and jeans. But his actual sweatshirts, his knitwear is one of the strongest um, pieces in his collections overall. And some of the accessories, of course. But then... When he obviously got hired to do Louis Vuitton, um, I was one of the few people, um, especially in my friendship group, who was quite adamant that he would do a good job at Louis Vuitton because I always believed that outside of his off-white work, all these collaborations that he did um, prior to his announcement with um, Louis Vuitton were complete smash hits, right? In from, a de- from a design, from an aesthetic level, from a taste level, from a cultural level, he just knows what to do, right? When, so when he collaborates with somebody. Like if, he, if, you're just, if off-white collaborated with Boiler Room, you know it'll be cool, right? It'll be something amazing straight away. If you collaborated with Adidas, it was amazing straight away. If you collaborated with Fresher, it'll be really cool straight away. Like you know that he knows he he has he knows how to extract the codes of another brand, imbue them in his brand, and then somehow create a new thing. Like that's what he's that's what he's really, really um special at doing. So I knew given the opportunity to work under Louis Vuitton, um, with their atelier, with their craft people, with the with the talented designers and um artistic directors and creative directors and photographers and all that sort of kind of people working in that kind of team collaboratively, which he loves to do anyway. I knew it'll be it'll be, it'll be a smash hit. I just knew it. And plus, I assume he wouldn't be as um he wouldn't be as detached from the design process because you know as much as he likes to promote the whole idea behind designing everything through WhatsApp and all that sort of shit. It is sometimes necessary to be in the studio actually making stuff, right? Actually, like, you know I mean, putting your hand to things and touching things, it does, you know, you do actually probably need it to do that more than, than anything. Even the Nike 10 collaboration that he did, a lot of the ideas that he kind of spoke about were kind of transmitted through text, but the initial kind of inspiration, if you see some of the interviews that he speaks about it, was going to the design, um, Nike design um, studio. I forgot what it's called. Um, the, the workshop that they do with their kind of, oh, is it the innovation workshop? I forgot what it's called. The Nike studio where they do all their cool, interesting stuff. That was a play. That was where he kind of got the inspiration to do Nike Ten, right? By going there and touching and feeling stuff, seeing innovation, and kind of really challenging and pushing himself to kind of do something new, an interesting or twist on something, right? And um, I knew he would kind of do the same thing with Louis Vuitton, right? He wouldn't take the opportunity lightly. He'd be there. He'd be present. He'd be trying to do the best job possible. Because again, you know, he's quite a divisive figure. He's quite a polarizing figure in, in the fashion scene. And there were probably people out there who were hoping that he'd fall flat in his face, right? And so far he hasn't he's kind of he's two for two now at the moment and it's also interesting to see the collections with with um louis vuitton are now being you know um numero they they're attaching numbers to it so i think the first one was 1.0 and it's now it's 2.0 that's what it's been it's kind of numbered as so i'm assuming they're, they're going to want to build an archive of all the kind of designs coming through whoever kind of takes over the house after virtual is going to have their era. i mean he's kind of you know there's a rhyming reason for everything that he does and this question i thought was fucking amazing it took inspiration from michael jackson um 
And by and large, I thought again, probably one of one of my favorite collections of his so far, outside of everything that, uh, from everything that he's done so far. Um, it probably built on the first collection. It was probably less emotional than the first collection, of course, naturally. Um, but again, great accessories um, that I'm going to kind of currently go through now that I saw um, bags and stuff. This is an article that was on Fashionista. I'm going to get this up on the screen. So it's called Fashionista. Um, all the bags from the Virgil Abloh collection. Get up on here. Here's a little slideshow. So I thought the bags, first of all, to start off with, were fucking nice, right? Really nice bags that I'm surprised a lot of people. Not, I haven't seen more people wearing these um, during fashion weeks and stuff, which has been surprising, I'm going to say. Um, but by and large, the, the the shoes, the kind of loafers, that of course were kind of modeled on the stuff that um, uh, Michael Jackson wore back in the days um the bags are just amazing i love the links that he does with the bags it's something that everyone always likes the material switch up is super was interesting too i'm not sure if that's felt i'm not sure if that's suede i'm not sure exactly what the material that is but i like the look of it um the the kind of sprayed steel link as well looks really interesting it looks like they changed the clasping on the end of the chain as well a little bit there that looks really cool um so all the bags look great. The trainers, again, I mentioned it previously, I think in another uh, episode, I mentioned in the first collection. I wasn't necessarily, I'm not necessarily a fan of the trainers. It's not something for me. But again, I can see why they'd work, right? And I thought as a model, as a basic shoe model, because you have to imagine, that's why the um, Saint Laurent kind of Jordan copy did so well. The Valentino army sneaker that still sells out really well. The Margiela replica sneaker of the army shoe sells really well. Just really basic models that work really well with the, with kind of various different outfits like you can take a valentino shoe and wear it with a pair of nudies you can take a you know um uh a margella trainer and wear it some uniqlo chinos like you can just move them around from different places i think this louis vuitton trainer although it looks like a skate shoe kind of jordan thing would work really well with loads of different brands and i think that's the kind of master stroke they've done it's something i knew he would be really good at acing accessories and the of course stuff like footwear and hats and stuff would be parking smash out of the park and create like its own little segment there where people could come and tap in kind of buy something that isn't as expensive as maybe the main ready to wear and kind of incorporate in different outfits and again it just looks amazing i think it probably looks better in this colorway than it did in the first collection um you've got a, a sort of i'm going to say what's that brush suede with a bit of is that felt right like tennis ball felt maybe on top there and you've got a bit of denim there on top there it looks really really cool again modeled maybe on uh, after some old school night old school vintage nike so maybe um some dcs i'm not too sure but they look really nice there um again great bags great loafers kind of you know again taking inspiration from michael jackson and um, great little accessories little trunks um the monogram on the outerwear looks fucking insane the little charms on the bags looks really cool like just really really great things that are going to be comp uh, all over the um i don't know award show season and videos and stuff that people are going to wear um, again you see the um, drawing back in from the first season the sort of like technicolor rainbow that was incorporated or what, no it wasn't technicolor rainbow what was it what was he called it it was called something where on the runway where each color I forgot what it was called anyway. But anyway, so that, that's kind of from the first collection kind of been rolled back in. This collection, again, great trunks, great bags. And this is where I think he just won. So I think with Virgil, even though he's done a good job with the ready to wear and the clothes look good too, I think the way he would have, the way I knew he would have win is just with through the accessories. If you got the accessories right, the clothes would kind of follow secondly because, you know, by and large, with a big luxury house like um, Louis Vuitton or these luxury brands, for the most part, the ready to wear collection prices would probably be a bit too high for the average consumer anyway, entry level, right? Jumpers will probably cost you like two grand plus, right? But a good way to kind of get people in um, the buying process or in the kind of top of the funnels, let's say, is to introduce them to kind of bags and accessories that are, you know, with under the kind of 1000 mark. And then through there, they can slowly build up and then start buying ready to wear pieces. Um, again, really, really cool and interesting um, thing that he's done here with the bags. Again, loads of little traditional colors, but I thought this was all really awesome. Um, now going to the actual collection itself, which I have here loaded. Um, loads of celebrity um, models, obviously, walking on a catwalk. I think there was Sheck West, Octavian, um, a few others. I'm not remembering. Um, Blood Orange and somebody, oh, Blood Orange and, 
aka Dev Hines was performing with another guy who I'm not too familiar with and they did an amazing rendition of a Michael Jackson song that was really cool they had Futura uh, tagging up the girdles the kind of spray paint on the side I thought he was going to do more of an actual piece there but I'm assuming because every, I'm assuming because there wasn't that much ventilation in the room they couldn't actually get him to actually you know spray a, a complete throw up on a complete piece that was a bit of a um, letdown but overall um, I thought the show was really cool how he had the kind of street um <laughs> Um, set up there, of course, Louis Vuitton, you know, were able to kind of, you know, throw the actual checkbook at the setup. Um, so that looked amazing. Seeing all his friends kind of sitting on the side as well was really cool. Sitting on the stoop, that was quite a cool little placement that he'd done there. Everything was quite well thought out. Again, um, I'm a big fan of most of the looks in here. Maybe some people would argue the tailoring isn't what it should be. But again, I just think sometimes, even talking about Hadi Suleiman, we're going to talk about later on with Celine. I just think sometimes there needs to be an acceptance of what that person is going to bring to the table. I think sometimes people, when they criticize designers or collections, there's sometimes, you know, it's your own expectations are coming into it. And other times you're expecting somebody else to perform to the same level of other people who are more talented in that regard, right? Like a John Galliano is just, you know, a craftsman, right? He can tailor the fuck out of anything, right? He can he can actually make a bespoke suit. Like he's one of the rare designers out there. So if you give him a, I don't know, a streetwear brand, he of course is going to make it look insane on the body. But I don't think you can expect somebody like Virgil who doesn't come from that sort of tailoring background, doesn't come from that pattern cutting background um, to kind of suddenly then turn into that because that's not something that he knows or has any sort of input on. Um, and part of the reason why Louis Vuitton would hire him is because of the things that he can do and the things that he cannot do. So again, I think for what it is, if you're, if you're a fan of it, I think it's cool. Again, if you're not a fan of that kind of look and you want something a bit more tailored, something a bit more um, highbrow, then there's other brands you can go to. But for me personally, I'm not I'm not that um, against it. Um, there is something to do. I'm, I'm trying to think of what that, what that um, reference is from, but there is something about the hat with the holes in it. That comes from my, because again, I'm a bit of a Mike Jackson addict, but I can't remember what the life of me is. There's something about, there's a story to do with this, right? Maybe it's in a video where he's like standing, he puts a finger over his head and it's shooting him and it's all bouncing off, right? There's something about the hat with the holes in it. But that was really cool. It reminds me of, uh, it reminds me of the Comme des Garçons and Louis Vuitton bag that came out a few seasons ago. Remember the one that was cut out with the holes? It kind of looked like a screen mask on the side of it. That was really cool. Um, so again, loads of really nice pieces. I love them. Whatever the material is on this, um, gray looks fucking awesome. Um, I'm not sure exactly what what it is that material, but it looks great. This jacket bomber or thing was probably one of the most standout outwear pieces that I saw there. Let um, me go back there. This thing here, um, it's sort of got like a funnel neck. I'm not sure if it's got a hood on it. Maybe it's got a hood there, but with the monograms all embossed all over it, it looks insanely good. Again, something that is easily going to be sellable in the main collection even for somebody that's not like a big fan of Virgil um, I'm a big fan again of these um, pocket accessory things that he's done all over the, the coat by and large on these pieces kind of extension again from the first collection he called it something right like accessory morphism or something along those kind of lines right where you can kind of wear an accessory and it kind of has its own little pocket functions accessories on it um, great pieces I wasn't really a fan of these little pleated skirt looks I wasn't really sure what that was about and where that came from it kind of felt a bit random it kind of felt like the thing that he does at Louvre at some time off white it kind of feels just before they're, they're going to show on a runway he might just decide oh there's some material left over let's just put that there throw that here right so it's a bit it's a bit cut and pasty so I didn't really like that pleated skirt there might be a minor reason behind it but it wasn't necessarily a look that I kind of liked it kind of seemed a bit last minute.com and a bit rushed um, but that's just my opinion um, again a nice Mac there nice all over print there great look there Maybe this might this might be a look that might do with a bit more tailoring, right? There's loads of crumping up here on the pants and stuff and whatever. This might need a bit of tailoring and a bit of done because that would look incredible if that was kind of, you know, nipped and tucked a bit better into the body. That would look really insane. Um, the kind of crop suit jacket uh, blazer with uh, crop pants. That would look really nice if it was tapered a bit more, kind of similar to like um, a little bit more of a, gi a gargantuan Heide Aikman look um these coats again looked amazing you can easily see someone like p diddy wearing something like this right it's a whole complete p diddy look even down to the model um and there was one of my favorite looks here that i'm gonna quickly scan through again this whole collection was fucking cool this was one of my favorite bits as well this this jacket whatever that's made out of looks insanely good it reminds me of something that Givenchy might have done back in the day but whatever that finishes like how flat it is on the body the way that kind of fold comes over there with the strap on front looks just insanely good 
Um, it looked even better when I watched it because I watched the live stream of the actual runway. It in movement as well looked fucking awesome. Um, a return as well to the kind of workman. Are these the workwear gloves that he did in the first collection? Yeah, he's got a few of them. So I'm assuming this is a motif that's going to carry through. I'm not sure if it's part of the kind of Louis Vuitton atelier thing that he does on Instagram, but this is something that kind of runs through these sort of like um, workshop gloves, these kind of handyman gloves that are kind of a continuation into um, from others from the previous season that he done on the first runway show. Um, and there was one look here that I've sure that it's going to be every of course the silver looks probably going to be most places people are going to be wearing that but i thought this look with the bandana whoever this these two looks these kind of pajama sort of outfit things looked insanely good really fucking good right like so 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 good like a fucking scarf on top of your head and i'm not sure if that's a do-rag or just a, a a scarf that they've just pinned on there with some pins but this looks incredibly 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 good i love this look um this kid as well in the purple was the guy that was dancing i think after the runway show he came back down did like a, a little dance i wasn't really michael jackson a bit weird and just did some backflips and ran run off the stage it was quite cool i think i then saw him again at the jack moose um runway show but i thought if what would be a great idea for the louis vuitton michael jackson inspiration of a show now it's passed anyway of another time Time, would have been if they got that kid Do you remember that kid that was on a viral video in paris or france or somewhere in france and he's dancing outside and he's got dreadlocks and he's dancing he's doing a moonwalk all across like some square somewhere and he goes up to these people that sit next to a fountain and he kind of like sits down and starts dancing next to them as well it's like a one minute video like, a, like some french kid and i think he appeared on ellen too he would have been awesome i thought he was going to come out and then that would have been great because he's really a, he's like a really good like michael jackson sort of dancer but that kid's more like a traditional kind of you know um dance in that respect doing backflips and shit but it was still quite cool to see um again oh and this is my favorite another one of my favorite pieces as well this bomber jacket well, well, well this flannel that's kind of cut a bit cropped and it looks like a sprinkled with i've done it the dead diamonds or whatever they are but it just looks in so instead of it being bleached right so because sometimes you kind of tops that like, supreme have done one but then Siago have obviously done one um like similar to the kind of one that i have right instead of it being bleached they've kind of instead of where the bleach splatters all over it they've kind of covered it with diamonds or crystals or something it just looks fucking incredible really fucking cool and again um loads of other great looks in this collection too just quickly scan through that was a nice little other looks as octavian Dare in a great outfit it looks really cool it looks like something he'd wear day to day to be honest so that's a great little casting tip there they done as well um loads of great stuff loads of great stuff again that hat nice brown pieces um i like that shirt i like this outfit all over print stuff looks fucking cool i think that'll do really well in the stores um this looked as this look as well was one of my favorites this white it's off-white kind of patchwork coat just looks insane with the american flag on it like you know maybe tying back again to um you know virgil's idea of americana with michael jackson being at the forefront right the actual american dream um all the world um bag is all, all the flags all over it it looks really fucking cool too or well, heal the world probably motif from there again great outfits and all red um again the casting was great just on again the casting for me i'm not really i'm not that really fussed about brands that have all white cast and that sort of shit uh models and stuff i'm not really care in that regard i just only care when it doesn't represent the actual cons the the customer base right the people that are actually buying the brand itself so if with louis vuitton and with virgil being who he is he's really plugged into youth culture he's kind of you know um fans out there are kind of a smorgasbord of you know all the races under the under the sun right so it only makes sense that they'd be reflected in the runway because those are the kids that are gonna inevitably be buying the stuff he's selling but if you're selling stuff and it's you know only going to a certain demographic then fair enough have those guys and girls reflected on the runway same goes same could be said for plus size models right have whatever's reflected in your clothing reflect on the runway like a tail phone those kind of all those kind of brands they are they are highlighting a, a particular like subculture or subsect of people or a particular scene so it only makes sense that they have those kind of characters on the runway right if they had just traditional models on there it would just look a bit shit right they need to street cast some of their friends and family on the runway for it to kind of add a bit of life to it but i'm not really for the whole like quota thing right let's get too black too asian i think that's a bit weird in general like you know like i don't really mind if this is all white if it's your, if your customer base is all white then it is what it is isn't it but i thought virgil's um casting was just on point as per usual so great great things all over the whole collection i thought was great so yeah um this question was one of my favorites again from Virgil. i think he's given the opportunity 
Um, given so given the resources and working underneath Louis Vuitton, I don't think he was ever going to fail. In my opinion, it's going to only be you know a, a big catastrophe that will make him really flop in that regard. Um, I'm not surprised he's doing well. Some reports have come out which are a bit skewed because I think the report came out from somebody who's part of LVMH or something, right? And they said something along the lines of like, oh, um, Virgil Abloh's collection is already outselling Supreme and Louis Vuitton, um, you know, three times over or something. But, you know, you can't really take someone's statistics like that. You know, you're, you're, you're in charge of the books. You can, you know, maybe fob the numbers. So that, that is by the by. But if that is true, congrats. And of course, on top of that, New Guards Group, the company that kind of like owns, I think, Off-White, Heron Preston, Palm Agents, a few others. Um, they're, they're now also being absorbed into LVMH so it's going to be again like there's going to be more we're probably going to see a better representation of Off-White coming in the following seasons with a bit more injection of cash and production blah 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 good job overall I liked it um, Louis Vuitton for winter 2019